So for today's lesson, we're going to finish up our notes on factoring. So this is the bottom of page four in your packet. And then this will correspond to page seven in your packet on factoring. So this is what I call special cases. And the first one is called the difference of two squares. So to show this, I'm going to first FOIL a plus b times a minus b. So I'll do first, that's a times a is a squared. Outside minus ab, inside plus ab, and last minus b squared. So when you FOIL this, the middle cancels out and you're left with just a squared minus b squared. So this is called the difference of two perfect squares, the subtraction of two terms that are perfect squares. So the idea is if we start with this, if we can recognize this, it's easy to factor. We just go backwards to this. So let's see an actual example. So 4x squared minus 9. So this is the difference of two perfect squares. 4 and 9 are perfect squares. So this special case is not going to work without those perfect squares. So if you recognize that you have the difference of two squares, it's very quick to factor. What you can do is just square root your first term, which is 2x, and put that in the front. Square root your last term, square root of 9 is 3. And then for those middle terms to cancel, you'd have to have 1 plus 1 minus. Okay, let's do one more example. 2x squared minus 162. So this one is kind of a tricky one because I have the difference, but neither 2 or 162 are perfect squares. But sometimes your factors have a greatest common factor. Can we divide both of these terms by something? Yes, we can divide them both by 2. So if I take a 2 out, I'm left with x squared minus 81. So now what we have left is the difference of two perfect squares. This is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square. So now we can use our special case. The 2 will just fall down, and then this factors, the square root of x squared is just x, the square root of 81 is 9, and then we have 1 plus 1 minus. So usually students really like when they see these ones because they're pretty easy. You just have to recognize what you have and then know that you've got 1 plus, 1 minus, and you have to know how to take your square roots, and that's it. Okay, and then the last example are called perfect square trinomials. So I want you to go back and remember... When we did a plus b squared, that means a plus b times another a plus b. And then you had to fully FOIL it. Um, and I showed you that there is a shortcut to this. That is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And the same thing exists with minus. a minus b squared. That would go to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So at first this looks intimidating, but once you see an example, it's not too bad. What you're really looking for are perfect squares on your first term and your last term. The middle term does not have to be a perfect square. It just has to follow this pattern. So let's see an example. Let's start with x squared minus 10x plus 25. The good thing with this is you don't have to recognize that it's a special case. You can factor this the same way we've been factoring all week. Factors of C that add up to B. Um, but if you recognize 
what we're looking for here. Is this a perfect square? Yes. Is this a perfect square? Yes. Okay, let's square root them. So the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 25 is 5. And now if I multiply those two together and double it, do I get 10? Yes. So if I just do my square roots, if I have a minus sign, there's a minus sign here, and then it's squared. And when you do these, you can write your final answer like just like this, x minus 5 times x minus 5. Either one is fine. So you can factor this the normal way we've been doing or recognize that it's a perfect square trinomial and you can write it like that. And last example, 4x squared plus 28x plus 49. So once again, you could factor this the normal way we've been factoring, but notice how these numbers are a little bit bigger and it would be a little bit more complicated. So if you can recognize, is this a perfect square? Yes. Is this a perfect square? Yes. So let's start by square rooting them and see what we get. So square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 49 is 7. Okay, 2 times 7 is 14. And now double it. Do you get 28? Yes. And then because everything is a plus sign, plus sign here, and squared. And you can write your answer 2x plus 7 times 2x plus 7 if you prefer. Either one is fine with me. So that's the last of your notes on factoring. Um, you can now flip to page 7 and do that assignment. Good luck!